Hi everybody, it's Regina from Solutions 8. Today I'm gonna to talk to you about how to uh, assess whether a search campaign is uh, holding its own, contributing to your smart shopping conversions, or whether it makes sense to turn it off. Now, if, you're, if you are an e-commerce company uh, who runs uh, shopping campaigns and also um, search campaigns, then this information will apply to you. Uh, if you, you know, if you have a set amount of budget every month and you're already hitting that budget with your smart shopping campaigns, then obviously turn off your search until you're ready to increase your budget. However, a majority of our clients tell us, hey, we have an unlimited budget just so long as you can uh, hit a certain return on ad spend goal in the account. So uh, that becomes a little bit more complicated because now we have to decide, is search profitable or or is it just wasting money? Uh, and it's not always obvious. Uh, you can't just uh, kind of look at the dashboard and see that the ROAS is lower than your goal and turn off for search because oftentimes search, search and smart shopping play off of one another and they pass, uh, they pass uh, uh, leads back and forth and, uh, and you can't always tell which of the campaigns are making the conversions. And a lot of that has to do with the attribution model of the way that your uh, tracking pixel is, is set up. So I'm gonna take you through that. Uh, we're gonna take a look at a search campaign and try to decide whether we should turn it on, turn it off or leave it on. If you like this video, don't forget to hit subscribe and like below. And uh, all right, let's get started. All right, so here is a client account and uh, I have it sorted, I think, by ROAS right now. So we have brand at the top here making 900%, smart shopping making 534, and then search, which is only making 66%. So I had a good uh, idea that search should be turned off, at least for now, until we're ready to scale some more. But I wasn't 100% sure because the, the attribution model that we're using is something called data driven and it's AI based and I have no idea how the algorithm decides to um, attribute a conversion. So let me try to break this down for you. When you're setting up a conversion action and we're gonna head, actually let me head over to that section right now. So I'm gonna head over to the conversions area and you can see that our purchase conversion action is using data driven attribution model. That means when it makes a sale, it's going to decide um, where to attribute that sale, how much of that conversion goes towards one campaign or the other. So if there were two campaigns involved in the purchase and someone clicked on one campaign, a week later they clicked on another campaign and then converted, does the algorithm give 80% of the conversion value to the second campaign and 20% to the first? Or does it decide to give 20% to the second to the second and 80% to the first? With data-driven, you just don't know. It's, it's a totally blind thing. Um, there's other attribution models that are also a little bit hard to suss out, like um, time decay and um, there's another one, but I'm blanking on what it's called right now. So uh, there's something we can use to try to get a more straightforward picture of uh, how much of the conversion value did, did the search campaign really uh, help to get. And we're going to kind of use, uh, use that data as a, as a grain of salt in our decision making process of whether to turn off search or keep it going. So I'm going to head over to, uh, the attribution area, tools and settings, and then attribution. And I'm going to click on the model comparison tool. Let me just quickly set up a, a filter for this campaign. Campaigns you, this is what I had filters I had before. All right. And then I'm going to set up my comparison. So first I'm going to compare it with data driven because that's the one we're using. But this time I'm going to, I'm going to look at date at the last click. Okay. Which, which campaign, um, which campaign was the last interaction before the person pulled out their wallet and bought and make sure you have a nice wide date range. In this case, I'm doing uh, four weeks, but if your budget is lower, you might want to choose like 90 days. I only have four weeks available to me. Well, four and a half, I guess, because we only launched on the 22nd there. Okay. 
All right, so what I can see here is my search campaign called inbound-soul8. This one on the data-driven model got 21 conversions. However, it on the last click attribution model, it got double that, almost, almost double the conversions. So search really was helping a lot more than the dashboard made it look like. Um, now, because this is this number is almost double, we can probably take that 66% ROAS and just double it in our minds. And, uh, and we can already tell that that's still nowhere near the return on ad spend goal we have for the account. So therefore, let's go ahead and turn it off. Until we, until we scale a little bit more. Now, once you scale, at some point, you're going to max out that shopping network. Uh, you, you, at that point, will be able to take on a, a lower ROAS. Your margins will become a little bit more thin. And you'll be able to get people um, who are less low-hanging fruit and still make a profit. So someday, it'll make sense to turn that search campaign back on. But not today. Not until we scale. Uh, what one thing you can do if you're not exactly sure what the ROAS would be by looking at these numbers is you can um, you can take the conversion value conversion value of that last click model, which in this case is three thousand one hundred, and then go back and look at how much the search campaign spent. Search campaign spent 2,679. And then what you can do is calculate the ROAS yourself, okay? So uh, uh, ROAS is conversion value divided by cost. So I'm gonna do 3,100 divided by cost, which is 2,679. Yeah, so that's a ROAS of 116% and our ROAS goal is 350, so. If the search campaign is close to your ROAS goal, let's say it's 20% away or 30% away from your from reaching your ROAS goal, I would say leave it running because there are other benefits to running the search campaign. Um, it, it does continue to feed that shopping algorithm and uh, kind of point the algorithm in the right direction uh, with those uh, keywords that you're targeting in the search, but um, but if it's nowhere if it's nowhere close to your goal, then shut it off for now. Another way to think about it is this: if you look at the average cost per click for our smart shopping campaign, it's thirty eight cents. Now, the average cost per click for our search campaign is a dollar thirty six. Somebody who's looking at a shopping campaign, you know, they're in the shopping tab, they're looking at the product images, they're looking at the product pricing, they have wallet in hand, they are ready to buy. This person for 38 cents is much more likely to buy. It's gonna have a higher conversion rate, and yeah, I can see that right here, 2.41, than someone who's on the search network, right? Because they're just seeing a bunch of text who knows, they might be skipping over the ad area because they're just looking for how-to articles. And, and sure enough, the conversion rate is going to be a lot lower for those folks because they do not have wallet in hand. They're a little bit higher up on the funnel. And some of them, some of them are never going to buy, you know, <laughs> they're not even looking for something to buy. So, uh, you know, I would be willing to pay uh, uh, even more uh, for a click in smart shopping than I would for a click in a search campaign, just because the uh, the conversion rates are always going to be like this in those two campaigns. All right, so I know that's a lot of information. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions. And yeah, best of luck. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please give us a thumbs up. That lets YouTube know we actually know what we're doing. We shoot a video every single day. So if you want to be notified, hit that subscribe button. And if you have any input, don't hesitate to hit us up in the comments. We'd love to hear from you. We get very little human interaction. Thanks for supporting our channel. And hopefully I'll see you tomorrow.